what's up guys Philip here bringing you another review and today we're going to be checking out the Rocat Vulcan 121 Amio full size keyboard. So this is the regular full size Vulcan keyboard and they recently released a pro version which I'll be reviewing pretty soon here. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Now when receiving this package, what was included in the box was the keyboard of course, a detachable wrist rest which, which attaches with magnets and some instruction manuals that will show you some basic features on how the keyboard works. Now in terms of the build quality of the keyboard, the keyboard is made of a few different materials. On the front, we're gonna have this metal plate, which is cold to the touch, really digging that. And it has the Rocat logo embedded on there. I really like the design language this keyboard has going for it. And it also has all these cuts and indents at the top and these aggressive corners, really liking the gamer vibe here. The keycaps themselves do have a slim build quality and we'll be covering the switches a little later in the video. The volume knob at the top right of the keyboard keyboard is made of plastic and it spins left and right. It doesn't have a click feature. And next to the volume knob, we have a few media controls that can be customized in the software, which we'll also be going over a bit later in the video. The cable that's attached to the keyboard is not detachable, but it is made of a braided material. So it's gonna be a little bit more slippery when you're moving the keyboard around on your desk. And speaking of moving around, if you look on the back of the keyboard, this thing does have rubber grips on all four corners of the keyboard, and that's gonna help prevent the keyboard from sliding around when using the keyboard. And not only does the back of the keyboard have rubber grips, the wrist rest on the back also has two really long rubber grips, which is gonna stay connected to the keyboard. And the wrist rest itself is pretty much made fully of plastic. It is bendable. It does feel a little cheap at first, but I do like the fact that it's plastic because I've seen like pleather ones or fabric wrist rests and I don't really like those because they're not gonna last too long because of the material it's made of, but this plastic one, it's gonna last for a long time because it doesn't really get ruined over time. Overall, I don't really have any complaints with the build quality and the materials they use to construct this keyboard. The keyboard itself is gonna be fairly slim. It's gonna have a low profile build and you can really tell by looking at the keyboard from the side. You can see that the keycaps are really thin as well as the keyboard base and wrist rest that are attached. So overall it has a very low profile look and feel as opposed to regular mechanical keyboards. You can adjust the angle of the keyboard to go up and down a little bit with the legs that are on the back of the keyboard. This is a 100% or full size keyboard which means it's going to have the number pad and the center part with the arrow keys included on the keyboard. They are releasing a TKL version, 10 keyless, which means it's gonna be missing the number pad and it's gonna create a more, it's gonna have a smaller form factor than this one here, which is gonna be nice because you can bring your mouse closer to your keyboard and that's gonna provide for a more comfortable and ergonomic user experience when using both the keyboard and the mouse together. In terms of the key switches, the keyboard does come in a few different switch options and on the keyboard I have here, I'm using the red switches, which Rocat calls the linear Titan Reds. Rocat did make the switches on the keyboard more of a slim design and they're not going to be like regular mechanical switches. However, the reds on this one feel very similar to traditional reds on regular mechanical keyboards. And here's a quick typing test for y'all to hear what this keyboard actually sounds like. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this keyboard types, especially the way the keycaps are shaped. They have like this little arc that dips in so your fingers can be a little bit more comfortable and fit in more easily onto the keys. Now, in terms of the actual wobble of the keys, I found that this keyboard was constructed very well. If I wobble the any regular key on this keyboard, it has very little to no wobble. And the spacebar as well. A lot of mechanical keyboards, they have like this crazy wobbling issue where you barely tap the spacebar and it just wobbles. 
However, with this keyboard, I'm happy to say that the wobble is practically non-existent. So good job on Rocat for creating that polished and high quality build quality keyboard. Now a bit on the RGB lights. As you can see on the camera, the lights are fairly vivid and in real life, they're a lot more vivid than they are on the camera. So if you're using this thing in daylight, you're definitely not gonna have an issue with the lights appearing dim and at night they look really beautiful. If you install the Rocat software, which is called the Rocat Swarm, which you can get off their website, you can really customize the patterns, the colors, the animation sequences, all types of stuff with the software for this keyboard. One thing to note about the software is that it's only compatible on Windows, so if you're a Mac user or Linux, you can plug this keyboard into your device and type on it, but you won't have access to the features that the software has to offer. So my pros and cons with this keyboard, I'll start with the cons and then end with a good note on the pros. Now, I don't really have much cons, and I guess I'll say the only con I have is the price, and this thing goes for $150, $60 as of making this video, which is a little bit expensive for a full-size keyboard. They're competing with other companies like SteelSeries, Razer, Logitech, and they make a lot of fantastic full-size keyboards that are cheaper than that. And Logitech does make a, the G915, which is a lot pricier than this. That thing's like 200 plus dollars. But that keyboard is in a different category completely because of how high quality that thing is. I do wish that the price was a tad bit lower on this thing, maybe closer to like the $120 to $30 mark. $150 just seems a little pricey for a full-size mechanical keyboard. Now in terms of the pros, good things about this keyboard, I really like the construction quality. I like the slim, low-profile layout it has. And I do like that the wrist rest is made of a nice plastic material. That way it doesn't wear out with time. And also the lights, really beautiful lights. And you can really get them customized in the software to do pretty much whatever you want. And if you are interested in purchasing this keyboard, I'm gonna leave my link down in the description below pointing to Amazon on where you can purchase this. Be sure to stay tuned for the new version of this keyboard coming out called the Vulcan Pro as well as the 10 keyless version which is missing the number pad and I'll be creating a video on that fairly soon in the future here. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening in the tech world make sure you click that subscribe button and I'll keep you in the loop. Don't forget to like this video and leave your comments down below. See you in the next one.